Good morning. Welcome to Selfer Christian Center live stream service. It's Sunday morning. It's a beautiful morning, and we're so glad that you're here to worship with us. Let's open our hearts to receive everything the Lord has for us. Amen? Amen. Wherever you are in your home or here in this room, let's believe for miracles and see what God will do. Father, we just give you this time. We thank you for the privilege we have of meeting with you. And we thank you that your presence is here. And I pray that you will minister to everyone tuning in, that you will guide them, Lord Jesus. Help them to hear from you as the worship team leads us in worship as we share your word together. May your presence fill every home and meet every need. We give you praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name as we dedicate this time to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Let's join Pastor Rick and the worship team as they lead us in worship. Amen. Amen. If you're watching us from home or if you're here, come on, it's time to stand up, family of God. We're going to worship the Lord. We're going to proclaim his goodness. We're going to proclaim today that God reigns over all the earth. Amen. Yes. I mean, you know, it's good to start off the morning with saying, God, you reign over all the earth. Amen. Come on, say that with me. God, God you reign over all the earth. Say it again. God, God you reign over all the earth. Amen. Come on, let's put our hands together.
his goodness surrounds us. And we see his goodness in everything about us. Amen. Just sometimes we have to just say, Lord, I see your goodness in me. I see it, Lord. I see your goodness in that person or in that person. That's the evidence of his goodness. Evidence is kind of like when we think of evidence, we think of uh, of law enforcement. We think they want to look for evidence. But what are they looking for? They're looking for like a clue that was left behind. Something that was left behind for an event that was done. What is the evidence of Jesus coming into our lives? What is the evidence that you're showing? Can people see in you evidence of joy, maybe joy and maybe goodness? Can they see the evidence of Jesus in your life? Amen? Amen. Just give him praise today.
such a joy to see you in the Lord's house today, and we have some people that are here that have been gone from us for a very long time. Danica, Yvette, we are so glad to have you here from Italy, where Daddy's been stationed and couldn't get home, and so glad to welcome you back. John and Esther from New York, God love you. Lydia, it's good to see you today, Rhoda. Thank you for coming. God love you. Welcome to all of you. We're just delighted that you're here, and I know the Lord has wonderful things in store for us. Don't forget next Sunday, um, July 4th, we have a barbecue planned for after church, pony rides for the children, and um, cornhole for the adults, and a lot of fellowship for everybody. So if you haven't signed up, we'll pass this around and let you do that again today. God bless you, and thank you for being here as we prepare to go to the group. This morning I want to talk to us about the gift of miracles and before we present the word I want to present a miracle to you. As you know we've been praying for Pastor John Connors in New York for all the weeks that he was very very ill. And God has performed a wonderful miracle. So before we talk about miracles, I want that miracle to come and share with us what God has done for him. Will you welcome John as he comes? preachers can preach, and this is not a preaching time, this is a testimony time of what the Lord did for me. Uh, without getting into the details right now, I'd like to read a couple of scripture verses that are prevalent for what happened to me. I had the COVID, uh, intubated, all that. So listen up. In Psalm 68, 19 to 20, it says, Blessed be the Lord who daily bears our burdens, the God who is our salvation. God is to us a God of deliverances, and to God the Lord belongs escapes from death. And then the second psalm that I read, or the second scripture, uh, I'd like to read before I give you the complete testimony here. In Romans 14, verse 7 8, it says, For not one of us lives for himself, and not one dies for himself. For if we live, we live for the Lord. Or if we die, we die for the Lord. Therefore, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. And it seems that the Lord has given me a little more time on this planet, which I'm so happy. But as a God of deliverances, uh, let me just say that I thank uh, this church and uh, Pastor Nichols. Uh, many other people have been praying for me during that time and when it's God's will for you to go, you're going to go. But many times God puts it on people's hearts to pray his will. And I believe firmly in prayer and that it was the prayers of the saints. Uh, Mrs. Nichols, who called my wife every day, every day, to see how I was doing. So where was I? Well, I was in a hospital. Uh, I went in there with uh, very shallow breathing. And my oxometer bed was in the low 80s. So they kept me and they gave me some remdesivir, which is a, uh, a viral load decrease. It's supposed to hold down the viral load from just getting so big. But it affects your lungs. And what happened was I was getting, as I'm in the hospital, and also they gave me uh, steroids and, and some uh, plasma. Plasma is someone else's antibodies that they intervened to give it to you. But it was about already seven days, and they say the longer you wait before you address it, uh, the worse it can get. But in any case, uh, my head was really hurting me a lot, and I couldn't understand why, and it was ice cold, ice cold. I said, what's going on 
doing here? Give me some hot pockets or something to warm up my hands. So he gave me some hot pockets, but it wouldn't work. Finally, the doctor came in, did you ever have a corporal tunnel? I said, no, none of that. And he felt my hand, squeezed my hand. Long story short, they did a uh, sonogram and I had a blood clot up here that was not too far from my heart and it was stopping the blood to go to my hand. And that's why it was very painful and very cold. So they did surgery right away, and uh, it was a lot more than what she originally thought for blood clots. COVID thickens your blood, and I might have had uh, AFib, which is your heart goes like this. I get that occasionally. The blood pools, and whatever happened with the thickness, it got stuck there. And, you know, I should have died, more than likely, but God kept me alive. And after, I guess, I don't know how long, 20 days, I'm not too sure how long I was in, but uh, they had to intubate me after the operation, and I had no consciousness being intubated, nothing. Uh, when she put me under the nurse, I said, you know, don't DNR me, I, you know, I don't want my, if I'm going to die, let me die. And she said, no, I, I think you'll be okay. And I said, well, I don't want to be intubated. Give me some kind of sedative that is like a colonoscopy. You know, we, I don't know if you know this or not, but when you get general anesthesia, when you go to hospital, they intubate you and, and it makes your lungs breathe. I never knew that, but in any case, they do that for surgeries. So when I got out of the surgery, she talked to my wife, thank God. And she said it was, it was close, but they succeeded. And so they intubated me for maybe three days. Uh, I came out of it. Uh, then gradually they break down the strength of the oxygen they're giving you. Uh, so finally your oxygen level is somewhere uh, close to 94 thereabouts. Uh, 97 is the average. 92 is not too good. Under 90 is not good at all. So they got me out of there and I knew that it was the Lord, because trust me when I tell you, I had no way of wanting to get myself better. I was zapped in my strength. When they let me out, they had to put me on oxygen in my house for a couple of weeks or really as long as I thought I needed it. And I'm always one to push medication away as long as I can because I want to get better. And it was a couple of weeks, but I couldn't even walk up six stairs without huffing and puffing. Uh, it was a big, big humbling for me. And uh, showers, I had to have a chair in the shower. My wife, if we'll... So she was by me, uh, truthfully, all this time, uh, interceding as well as putting out SOSs. And it was all the churches here the Nichols, churches in Florida, even Mexico got involved. I said, yes. And uh, so it was, a, it was a prayer time. I give the glory to God because that's what our lives are about. It's not, a, it's not about me. It, it's always about what he has done. So he gave me a few more years for whatever it may be because we all going to meet the Lord one day. And he's just given me more time, and I'm grateful for it. And the times we're living in, I'm more grateful because I believe God is, is going to be doing something great. And I want to be here when it happens. Let me close with this scripture verse. It says in 2 Corinthians 1 8, now Paul was going through a heavy, heavy depression. It doesn't tell us what it was. So much so that he despaired even of life. He didn't want to live. And it reads this thing. For we do not. Brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure above strength so that we even despaired of life? And my question is, sometimes I feel that way. I don't know about all of you, but I'm sure everyone has a time when you say, man, I just take me home, Lord. It's, it's too hard. So you're in good company because even the Apostle Paul felt that way. And so it goes on, but we had the sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God who raiseth the dead. And that's the principle many times that God uses in all our lives too. 
in our weakness, his strength is perfected. And sometimes it's very hard to, to get weak uh, until you get clobbered. And then if finally, God, this is it, I can't do it. And so in that time of our weaknesses, or even in our times of despair, or you're feeling like, where's this all going? It's okay. God is there. And in that weakness, God is going to show himself strong. As you sang the song, we surrender. And practically speaking, that's what it is for me as well. The closing thought was, Jesus, who delivered us from so great a death, and doth deliver, in whom we trust that he will yet deliver, so is past, present, yea, also helping to get, uh, in whom we trust that he will yet deliver, past, present, and future, for the gift bestowed upon us by the means of many persons, thanks may be given by many on our behalf, ye also helping by prayer, we give thanks. So I want to say thank everyone who prayed or didn't pray or supported uh, Pastor Nichols. Uh, continue to pray for your leaders, the Bible says. Continue to pray. Paul even said, pray for me. Now the Apostle Paul needed prayer. He wasn't ashamed to say, I want to encourage you, exhort you, pray for your leaders. Pray for your pastor. Pray for your leaders who are servant leaders. Prayer is, is powerful. It, it's, it, when it's according to God's will, and sometimes there are people who get COVID and they prayed hard and they die. But why? It was God's will, that's why. The person wasn't sinning and they're living in sin and God's taking them. So I, I empathize with those who have prayed just as hard. And their loved one didn't make it on this side because God wanted them. So, but keep praying because the Bible says, the prayer of a righteous man or woman availeth much. Pray again, I'll close with, for your pastor, for your lead servant leaders, wherever they are, and pray for one another because we're in some hard times and you think things are getting normal? I do, but stay in the spirit. There's a lot more could be happening. And we're here today. Thank you, Jesus. And I want to thank you all for praying. Continue to pray. And we give God the glory. Whether we live or die, we live and die for him. Amen? Amen. 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 Thank you, John. Esther, his wife, as you may or may not know, is a nurse. So God provided for that care at home as well, and she was certainly by her side through all of that. Sister Angela, it's so good to have you here today, and Lydia, and I'll see you. I called over Lydia a minute ago. Beautiful girls. John didn't know it, but I had planned to speak on miracles this morning, and I thought it was so wonderful to have a live example. Did you appreciate his testimony this morning? Let's tell him once again. Praises to the Lord, isn't it? Because we know that He is the author of miracles. Do we believe in miracles happening today? Yes. yes. I'm glad you all agree. How many of you are believing for a miracle in your home or someone that's very dear to you today? If you are, would you raise your hand? We're going to have a moment later where we're going to pray for those. But keep that in mind as you hear the message today. We've just seen and heard of a modern-day miracle. If anybody asks you, does God still heal, you can tell them yes. Because there were times where we thought John was slipping away from us. And John's God has more work for you to do in New York, and that's why you're still here. And we're praying for that church as well, that God will just bless and use you in amazing ways that you haven't even seen yet. If you agree with that, congregation, say amen. amen. Let's pray for him as you think of him. What is the gift of miracles? I want to talk about that for a moment. It's the supernatural power to intervene and counteract <coughs> earthly and evil forces. It is a display of power giving the ability to go beyond the natural. It operates closely with the gifts of faith and healing, and it takes authority over sin and Satan and sickness and every other work of the enemy. 
Miracles in the Bible and miracles today have the same purpose. Number one, it's to bring glory to God and to his kingdom. When we hear of John's healing, we give God the glory and the praise, don't we, for saving his life. It also blesses the person receiving the miracle. John is blessed by this miracle. It brings others that are impacted by the miracle. All of us were impacted as we saw God do this for John. And it's a witness to others that God can do the same thing in their lives. Gifts of the Spirit often work together. The gifts of faith, of wisdom, of knowledge work together to give direction to the one praying for a miracle. Jesus' miracles were often motivated by compassion. When he walked on the water, he was having compassion for his terrified disciples that were in a boat. When he turned the water into wine, he had compassion on his mother, who was concerned about the wedding going well. The word records that he was moved with compassion when he would look at the multitudes and see their needs and know how much they needed him. Compassion ministries extend the hand of Jesus and the heart of God to people. The death and resurrection of Lazarus captivates the compassion of Jesus for his friends and the grieving family as well as confirming his identity. He is the resurrection. Miracles leave a lasting lifetime impact. We'll never get over John's miracle, and Esther and John will never get over it either. Not only for the one that received, but also those that were believing with him. It encourages our heart to see what God does. Evangelists have found that miracles and ministry go hand in hand. And our missionaries all over the world expect God to do miracles when they pray, and he does. God is always in charge. He is sovereign, but he chooses to work through earthen vessels like you and me to do his miracles. It's a perfect God plus fallen humanity, and that performs God's will on earth. God works in spite of us. John 15, 5 says, apart from me, you can do nothing. We remind ourselves of that often. God works in spite of our weaknesses and inabilities. We lack wisdom and direction, but God gives it, and he is available to us as we pray. Our ability to minister is not based on how we feel, but on knowledge that our God can and will do miracles that we're asking him for. He looks for an obedient and willing heart to work through. As we pray, we listen for the direction of the Holy Spirit. Miracles are signs that always point to God. Miracles, signs, and wonders all give attention and glory to God. We realize that a divine intervention has taken place when a miracle happens. Amen? Amen. And that's what we ask for. God, we need you to intervene. Man's done what he can do. Doctors do their best. And they were analyzing every detail of John's progress. But they're limited. They can only do what they can do. But our God, there's no limit to his power. Amen. In the early church, miracles were perceived as a common occurrence for the purpose of establishing the validity of the message and the messenger. They were evidence that God's kingdom was being established here on earth and that heaven was invading earth. Peter's sermon on the day of Pentecost establishes a link between the miraculous and the authority of Jesus. And he wrote these words in Acts chapter 2, verse 22. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves know. You hear the divinity of Jesus as the Son of God displayed and in, in the miracles that he did. Acts 4.30 says, By stretching out your hand to heal, signs and wonders were done through the name of Jesus, your holy servant. Miracles meant that the Lordship and the divinity of Jesus would be established and the body of Christ, the church, would grow as a result. Acts 4.33 with great power, the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. Should today's church operate any differently than the early church? Should we expect miracles? That's kind of weak. Should we? 
When you pray, do you believe that God's going to do what you're asking him to do? Yes. You know, I check myself sometimes because I ask the Lord for hard things. And sometimes I say, Lord, if my faith is limited, please give me more. I need to believe for this miracle. And God wants us to, as we pray, he wants it to be believing prayer. Believing that God can do what we're asking him to do. We just finished a study of the book of Acts on Wednesday nights, and our starts and hearts have been stirred to see God do in our church today what he did for the apostles in that book. And he will use us if we will let him. Are you available for God to do a miracle through? I told Esther over and over, it was a joy to partner with her. Though she was in New York and I was in California, our hearts connected every day as we agreed in prayer for this man believing that God would do what only he could do, and he did it. We're praying for revival in our city, in our world, in our church, aren't we? Do you want to see revival in our church? How many do? Amen. A revival where God comes and moves and does what he can do. We sang about it this morning. And as we lead the way, miracles will fulfill their purpose, and many will come to know Jesus. That's the whole purpose. When the doors of this church open, I want it to be packed with people that are hungry to know Jesus. Some of them for the first time. I want all of you to come too. But I want the others that don't know Jesus yet to be drawn in. That as they drive by or walk by, they'll just literally feel the tug of the Holy Spirit drawing them in. Amen. And revival will come. Let us come to expect the daily moving of the hand of God in our lives. We sang about it this morning, his goodness being just all over our lives. The early church had God as the epicenter of their lives. And I pray that ours will be the same. Nothing came close or interfered with that. I want us to live expecting miracles. I don't know about you, but they may come in small packages. Do you recognize God's miracles every day in your life? In little things? I do. I spend half my day thanking the Lord for taking care of that and reminding me of this and protecting me as I went there. Do you? Yes. I don't take it for granted, people. I believe these are miracles, small interventions by God in the eyes of some people, but important to me, to you, and they happen to you. You know what? Recognizing him in those small miracles makes it easier for us to believe for the big ones. God, you did this for me. And I know you could do this as well. Amen? Can we let our faith dare to go there? Will you go there with me? The early church experienced God from the day of Pentecost, and they never looked back. The power that they received on that day continued to work in their lives. To position ourselves for miracles, we must begin by believing that God is everywhere, in everything, every day, every hour. The world that we are charged to reach must see Jesus living in us, must sense that we know someone who can do what only he can do. Believe steadfastly that God will fulfill every promise he has ever made. I believe somebody said there are 3,000 promises in God's word. You know what? They're all true. What he said he will do. Call upon him in believing prayer, asking and expecting him to perform signs, wonders, and miracles, to confirm with power the gospel message that we speak. The book of Acts is a record of Christians practicing life through the power of the Holy Spirit. May Southport Christian Center be a church that lives in the power of the Holy Spirit. Do you want to live there? Amen? You want your life to radiate the power of God in all you do? Me too. Let's do it. They fasted and prayed fervently, and their faith was rewarded with miracles working through the power of God. Acts is about ordinary people doing extraordinary things. I want to be one of those people, don't you? As I pray, I want to sense God answering. Signs follow those who believe. The Holy Spirit bears witness to Jesus and empowers believers. Jesus' life on earth demonstrated the power of the Holy Spirit by dealing and healing the sick and casting out demons and setting captives free. That same spirit in Acts 2 is promised to the disciples. 
you know what? It was promised to us as well, to as many as were afar off, and that was you and me. They received what Jesus had in order to do what Jesus did. And that's what we want for our day as well. Acts is filled with reports of other people receiving the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> and in Acts 1.5, the Holy Spirit is promised to every believer. We're going to need the power of the Holy Spirit. As John mentioned, there are some things ahead that are going to require that we be empowered by God's Spirit in order to do what Jesus did. In your private devotions, invite the Holy Spirit daily to infill your life. Expect him to speak through you in another language and allow his power to invade your heart. The church has a vital role in these last days, and I believe that God is going to amaze us with his wonders as we believe him to do it. We badly need him to show up in our government, in our world, in our city, and in our church, and let's believe him to do that. The church is his body. He is the head. Let's believe for signs and wonders and miracles to take place. Let's claim the promises of Joel chapter 2, that he will repay us for the years the locusts had eaten. When the churches were closed, that took a hard swipe. In every church, every church has felt the effect of doors being closed. And now that they're reopening again, more and more so, let us believe that God is going to repay the years that the locusts have eaten. And afterward, in verse 28, it says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams, and your young men will see visions. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days. If you look at that verse, no one is left out. Men, women, young, old, that's expected. Amen in our day. There are other events prophesied in that chapter as well. This morning, if you're believing for a miracle for yourself or for someone in your family or someone that's dear to you, would you stand to your feet? somebody that you love or you're concerned about or you want God to show up and do something that only he can do, would you join hands with someone else who is near you that is also standing? And let's join our faith together. You know, there's power in unity, isn't there? And as we join our hands and our hearts, let's believe for God to do what we are asking him to do. Check your heart for just a moment. And say to yourself, God, am I really believing you to do what I'm going to be praying for right now? And if the answer is yes, pour out your heart in prayer as we pray together. Father, this morning, look at Southport Christian Center. Please walk up and down these aisles. I pray that you will look at every heart, Lord, every joined hand, as we name before you those that we are believing for. Some are miracles of healing. Some is for salvation. Some is for deliverance. I pray, Lord, you are the God of signs and wonders and miracles. And we join not only our hands, but our hearts as we believe you, Lord, to do what only you can do in this hour. Lord, we thank you for what you did for John Connors in New York. And Lord, I thank you for what you are doing this day, this moment, this hour as we pray. That you're reaching across the miles, Lord, to touch those that are sick, those that are in the hospital. Lord, we lift Rob before you today. We ask that you will turn that situation around and do for Rob what you did for John. I pray, Lord, for comfort for those that have lost loved ones, that you will heal their hearts. You are the repairer of broken hearts, Lord. Put the pieces back together, we pray. We give you the praise. We thank you, Lord, for every prayer that's being prayed. See our hearts, Lord. Strengthen our faith as we reach out to touch you for those in need today, Lord. We believe you to do amazing things. We ask, Lord, that you will do what doctors cannot do. Go beyond their scope, Father, and perform the signs and wonders and miracles 
That is the God that you are, and we honor you this morning. We give you praise in advance, Lord, for all you have done and all that you will do as we trust you and believe you in the days to come. Thank you for hearing the cry of the desperate this morning, Lord. Thank you for lifting hearts into your very presence, for taking burdens that we cannot carry, Lord, and ministering to everyone present. We give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's give him praise. Amen. this morning, continue to believe for what God will do. If there's anybody here who doesn't know Jesus, this is the moment to open your heart and receive him. Ask him to come into your life, to be your savior. That's the greatest miracle of all, it's when he takes a life, removes the sin, forgives it, covers it with his blood, and makes you his child. Lord, I pray for anyone listening this morning that has that need, that they will open their heart to receive you just now. Je Jesus, come into my heart, forgive my sin, wash me white in your blood, and live in me by your Holy Spirit, that I may be able to love and serve you in the days to come. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. We rejoice with that one who is receiving you today, in Jesus' name. Amen. If we can be a blessing to you, let us know. We would love to. And Rick, is the worship team going to sing one more song for us? All right. Worship team, come back. They're going to sing a song called Waymaker, Miracle Life. And that's what we've been talking about. Amen? Amen. Let's believe this morning that it will be so. Where are you going? God is always working. Always working. He never tires. He never sleeps. never slumbers. He never hurries. He never late. Amen. Let's stand together.
you know him this morning? Yes. You know him as all those things. Oh, how wonderful. What a precious Lord he is. Let's give him praise. One more time. Yes. Think of the words, the way maker, yes. the miracle worker, the promise keeper, the light in the darkness. Yes. He is all of that. Thank you for joining us today, for your love, your prayers, your support of this ministry. We're so grateful to you. Don't forget next Sunday, July 4th, right after the service, we'll go downstairs and enjoy a barbecue lunch with Brother Pete. And we've got pony rides for the children and cornhole for the adults and fellowship for everybody. The other services are listed in your bulletin. Have a blessed and wonderful day, and let's believe God to do what we're asking Him to do. Amen? Amen.